Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. Welcome to all the new people who I assume have found me through the news.com.au article. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I answer every comment that's down there at the moment. Today has been a bit of a clean out the freezer thing. So over the next week or so I have to clean out the freezer of everything that's in there that needs to be used up and assess what's left and what needs to be used and uh, inventory for next groceries and things like that. So I quickly went through it today and pulled out a few things that were just easily accessible that needed to be gone. So I made some stock with some chicken carcasses and there was a few lonely pieces of broken puff pastry. So I made some apple pie little pastry things because there was half a jar of apples sitting in the fridge as well. The kids requested tuna bake for dinner so I've done that for dinner. And we fried up some tortillas into chips to try because we had some tortillas that were going out of date lots of bits and pieces of stuff that was in the freezer that just needed using. So come along and see what we got done in the kitchen today and I will see you again in the next couple of days. Daryl cleared the pathway out to where we're collecting firewood from now today so we're going to have to do a whole lot of firewood collecting to pile up on our little platform and we're got to get we got to sand down those posts for the chicken gates all sorts of things that are that have to be done but we're getting there so today was just a clean up the kitchen day and I thought I'd share it with you so I will see you again next time thanks guys for watching so I haven't got to doing a fridge freezer inventory yet but I did go quickly into the freezer and pull anything that was just you know stuck out to me as needing to be dealt with so one of the first things I did today was make some dog food or our stock that we make I wasn't keeping any of this stock for us because I didn't have time to can any but we did need some dog food so I threw in a bunch of carrots now this fridge has died that we had the carrots in so some of them are starting to oxidize quite badly so I just trimmed them as needed uh, put carrots and the chicken carcasses and uh, I used sweet potato because we had it uh, and I added some brown rice to this batch as well I don't know how that will go though because normally we drain and puree everything so anyway I decided to give it a go but maybe I need to cook the brown rice separately and add it afterwards uh, so I put all of that into the stock pot I add whatever I have available so if I had celery if I had zucchini if I had um, any sort of vegetable that the dogs will you know benefit from then I add it to the stock pot as well and I pressure pressure cook this for 90 minutes and then at the end we puree it into a paste for the dogs I don't think I got footage of that this time because Surreal did it for me uh, I froze the rest of the carrots so I trimmed any bad bits off them and just diced them up and stuck them in a freezer bag to go in the freezer so that they can be used and they won't go bad uh, so the oxidization is it's not a mold as such, I suppose it is. It's, it, it can be trimmed away and the carrots can be rinsed and they're fine. Uh, it happens in just spots where it's, there's moisture. So it, because the fridge hasn't been on and I didn't realize there were still carrots in there, some moisture was building up in there. If we had some sawdust or something like that in there, it would have been a bit like a, um, a, a root cellar or something and it probably would have negated the oxidization but I didn't realize that there were still carrots in that fridge that wasn't working so I pulled them out and froze them up and they will be used in the next batch of stock or dog food or whatever I need to use them for um, and that's fine mind you I've just taken stuff out of the freezer and then had to add stuff back but you know that's the way it goes and the next thing I did was I did some sweet potato because I was already doing vegetables I decided to steam some sweet potato to try sweet potato gnocchi instead of pumpkin gnocchi because we've got a whole lot of sweet potatoes that have come through the hampers recently and I imagine it'll taste the same so I decided that I was just going to peel a whole bunch of the sweet potato and fill the uh, pan as much as it can with it and I'll use that to make some gnocchi and see how everyone likes it uh, the so all I did was peeled it diced it stuck it in the steamer you can roast it which leaves it with a little bit less of a moisture in it as well but I my oven isn't working at the moment and I've been using the barbecue and uh, I just decided it was easier to just steam it so I just put it all in the steamer and steamed it until it was soft 
and then put it aside to make gnocchi with. I also found a few pieces of some puff pastry that had been jammed in between something and had a few cracks in it and was looking a little dried out and thought I would use that today. Uh, so I make these little pastry tart type things and all you have to, it's really simple and they look they look really impressive but really simple. All you have to do is cut them into the shape that you want and then you score an internal line of that shape. So you can do it in circles, you can do it in squares, you can do it in whatever shape you wanted. And you just cut a score in in from the edge in whatever distance you want. So, you know, the smaller the circles or squares, the narrower that distance is going to be, the larger you can have it wider. And when you score that, you then put all your topping on the inside of the score. So I put a little bit of almond meal, and that's to soak up any excess juices, stops the pastry from going soggy, and then your fruit or whatever you're going to put. So there was a half a jar of stewed apples in, that I found in the fridge from the other day. So they had eaten half of it with something, I can't remember what, pancakes maybe. And then the other half was was in the fridge so I decided that that needed to be used as well so this was a good use for it so you just fill the center scored bit with your fruit or whatever you're using you could use a jam you could use a Nutella I suppose or something like that uh, and then I sprinkle the edges with sugar and that just browns up the edges it does look nicer if you do an egg wash around the outside edge but I wasn't feeling that need to get fancy today <laughs> so I didn't do it uh, and then when you cook it the outside edges puff up and the inside stays into a little tart so it's like a little tart casing so a really simple but really effective sort of a, a thing to do and the kids really enjoy them uh, and I got to use those bits of puff pastry that just weren't looking real great the other snack I made today for the kids uh, was I had some flour tortillas that I had bought, which are a different sort to what I normally bought, buy. And I had purposely bought them to make a specific meal that I can't actually make this month because I'm not getting my quarter cow until next month. So these are close to being at their best before date. So um, instead of throwing them in the freezer, because I'm trying to clean the freezer out, I sliced some up into tortilla chips to try frying them off. So I cut them into little triangles and then I heated some lard up in our pan and just fried them in the pan to see how it would turn out. Now these are flour tortillas, not corn tortillas, but you can do it with flour tortillas. I have seen it done, so I decided to give it a go. And um, we have some fresh salsa, plenty of salsa on the shelves and stuff as well, so the kids could have it with whatever they wanted. So I cut them up, fried them off until they were crispy. Uh, they have an interesting texture because the they end up sort of, I want to say sort of biscuity rather than chip-like. And that's probably to do with the fact that they're flour rather than corn. Uh, but the kids really enjoyed them and it was just a quick experimental snack to use up some of those. And we used some more to put some roast chicken in late that day I think and we we used them up anyway because they were needing to be used and I had found them in the crates where we store the dry food so I had gone through that as well just to have a quick look at what's there I haven't done a thorough inven inventory of anything yet but I did a quick glance over for the day so this is what those little pastry tarts look like when they're cooked uh, the kids really enjoy them they're very simple they're not exactly great for you but you know you got to have treats sometimes One of the other things I found in the freezer was a bag with just a few of my sourdough bagels frozen and so I grabbed them out because I thought I would make tuna bake for dinner tonight and I used breadcrumbs on the top. So I grabbed them out of the freezer and let them defrost a little bit and then threw them in the Thermomix and uh, broke them up into breadcrumbs to use for the top. These are really nice as breadcrumbs because they have all the everything bagel seasoning on them. So there's sesame seeds and nigella seeds and garlic and onion and salt. So that goes all the way through the breadcrumbs and they're really nice. So I really like using stale my stale bagels for breadcrumbs. Uh, so that was a nice find sitting in the freezer there. I make uh, tuna bake for the kids regularly. They really enjoy it. Uh, so I do a very standard one as far as I'm aware. I start off with a roux so I use ghee for us but you can use butter and flour in sort of equal parts and I cook that off you want to cook it off till it smells nutty uh, otherwise you'll have raw flour flavor in your sauce so you want to make sure that it sort of slightly browns and smells kind of nutty and then you add the liquid in slow amounts so every time you add liquid to this flour mix you need to mix it up or you'll end up with great big lumps in it uh, if my 
Thermomix was working properly, you can make the white sauce in the Thermomix and it does all the stirring for you, which would be really handy, <laughs> but I am uh, doing it by hand and it's, it is kind of hard work, but it's, it's just, it's labor intensive. You have to sit there and stir it, otherwise you'll end up with it lumpy. So when I add my liquid to my tuna bag, I use uh, chicken stock as part of the liquid and I use coconut cream as the other part. So I start by adding the chicken stock and getting it smooth and then adding coconut cream, getting it smooth and then you add more as needed until you get to sort of a consistency. I think I added a can of water it to rinse out that coconut cream tin as well. You can use any liquid you want. You can use milk, you can use water really. It's you adding flavor at the end and the flour is what creates the creamy. So uh, it's personal preference. I did add some bouillon to this uh, for flavor purposes and then mixed that through really well and then I added some nutritional yeast as well because we don't use cheese so the nutritional yeast gives lots of flavor, B vitamins and uh, that cheesy sort of a flavor to it so I mixed that through as well. I then add a large tin of tuna or two depending on what I'm making uh, or who's grabbing me stuff from the pantry shelves and then I also add a kilo bag of the frozen veggies you know just the simple ones the peas corn and beans or whatever carrot diced carrot whatever you have a kilo of the smaller frozen veggies get mixed into that white sauce and they will cook in that white sauce but we're also going to bake this afterwards so that's okay you want to cook up some pasta for it we use spirals for this generally speaking and I make it with far less water I boil it in far less water than uh, recommended because you want these to be al dente and you want some of that starch water to use in your tuna bake so by cooking with less water you've got a more condensed starch water that you've got to use to loosen up your pasta and add to your dish so uh, it was two bags of so it's a kilo of I think they're 500 gram bags so a kilo of spirals cooked off in that water to use uh, and then once the pasta is cooked you add it to your white sauce mix so I prefer to mix it in a bowl and then pour it into the trays but you can do it in the trays I just find that I make a mess uh, you're gonna use some of this starch water in it so you don't want to drain your pasta into a colander because then you lose all the water so I do it the other way I just place it into the pan to mix up once it's mixed in then you can add some of that starch water to loosen it up because if you aren't going to rebake this if you're going to serve it just as is you don't want to add too much water because it's the right consistency but I'm going to put this in the oven to bake so by doing that it's going to cook further and that pasta is going to suck up more of the moisture and liquid and so I need a bit more moisture in there so using this starch water loosens up the pasta but also has a thickening aspect as well so I just used all of it this particular time but you need to just eye it and decide how much you want to use into that to create the texture that you want then I poured it into two of my cast iron trays I really love these cast iron trays I have them linked in the comments because they're one of my favorite trays to use uh, and then I topped them with the breadcrumbs so I put the breadcrumbs over the top and then if you want the breadcrumbs to be seasoned you can you can add a bit of paprika a bit of brown sugar a bit of garlic powder all that sort of thing but because they had the everything bagel season they didn't really need it so I just spread the top of the trays with the breadcrumbs and then if you want them to brown up nicely they'll need a little bit of fat so I just used my spray oil over the top I think I've got olive oil in this spray bottle at the moment it could be rice bran oil and I just sprayed the top of the breadcrumbs with that little bit of oil so that they would brown up nicely melted butter is always nice melted ghee is always nice just a little bit of fat added to that breadcrumb will make it brown up nicely uh, because the oven is on the blink we put them in the barbecue to cook which worked well but uh, I didn't serve dinner so I don't have any photos of it once it's cooked but it basically looks the same it's just got a little bit of brown on top so that was today's tasks done a few things pulled out of the freezer so that we can make for more room and make inventory easier and some leftovers for the kids for the next couple of days so thank you very much for joining me and I will see you again next time